What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Culture Verse episode three. I hope you all had a great and safe spring break, and I hope you all came back feeling healthy. Uh, as you know, and if you don't know, I am Caden, and this is my co-host Mahatia. Mahatia. Hey, Nova. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we're just going to get right into it today. Our first topic is talking about Marvel once again. I know we talk about it a lot, but, you know, the superhero business is a very big thing. It's and booming. Exactly. It's, it's booming. booming. It's always news. So basically what we're going to be talking about mainly is that Marvel has been, it, they are starting to make an effort or to be more quality over quantity because everybody's been saying they're more quantity over quality lately, which I very much agree with. They've been just pumping out too much and it seems like they're not taking their time with this. You know what I'm saying? What, 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 do you think, what are your thoughts on this? Well, like you said, uh, for a while they have been doing a lot of uh, quality over quantity. I think the last good quality thing the last good quality thing we've gotten was Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm -hmm. Other right. than that, Marvel has easily been on the downhill. Yeah. Not really good. I have not really cared to see uh, a lot of the movies, you know, such as I didn't see Black Panther. Mm -hmm. I didn't see Ant-Man. I think I think that's really it. And then I heard they uh, they fired Victoria Alonso, who's the FX animation and the post-production executive. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure she's been there since, like... For a while. I for think a since, bit. like, phase, beginning of phase two. Yeah. I think so. So she's been there for over a decade almost. Mm -hmm. And now that they kicked her out, that's obviously a very huge change. So, I, I, yeah, I, I think I think that it's very important that they're doing this. Yeah, uh, they sent because that shows that they are making an effort. They're trying to take a step forward to get back to how they used to be. And yeah, she was there for a while. But as we've seen in recent things, movies and shows that it hasn't been very quality like it, it's not what we as fans like when it comes to the MCU. Yeah, especially like in the animation department, like the CGI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We begin some horrible CGI. Oh, yeah. Like the like the last Thor movie with the floating head. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. What is that? Same thing with the Black Widow movie when they're riding the rocket yeah. or something like yeah. that. Uh, so hopefully they get somebody new who can actually bring back the good old CGI that yeah. we got from Phase 2, Phase 3 during Infinity War and Endgame. And uh, I, I got some hope. I got some. I mean, obviously it's Marvel. They're gonna find a very good person. Yeah. They're not gonna you know, just laze about. Get oh, yeah. somebody who's like you know somewhat not good, someone good, somewhat good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I said, I got some hope for that. Yeah, uh, I, and they're also well, yeah, because like you know they they do they I think they do very well with casting. I think they do very well with finding directors for things. So I'm I also am hopeful. Um, in some kind of recent news, we have that Fantastic Four, the new Fantastic Four coming for the MCU. The script is being rewritten by, uh, what is his name? His name is... Josh Friedman. Josh Friedman. He worked very closely with James Cameron for the Avatar movies. I know that it is... That's being told that, you know, like I told you, I, I talked to some people about it. I've gotten their opinions on it very mixed because you know as we all know avatar is a very visually appealing uh movie yeah. franchise but you know sometimes it's just like the story is not all compelling to a lot of us yeah. which I can it's understand. a hit or miss for exactly. uh, almost everybody it's either you love it or you don't really care for it like yeah. i don't mean you were talking for this mm -hmm. avatar 2 i i'm not really like, like I said, i've never really been the biggest james cameron guy yeah um i really only like the terminator what he did mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, you got to give it to the man. He has his bragging rights. He does have his bragging rights. He, he's got some good movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whether we exactly. like it or not, James Cameron is out there. He will go down in cinema history. Oh, yeah. And what's really interesting is that he worked very, very closely with James Cameron for the fourth Avatar movie. Cause, so basically, if, if you don't know the story, James Cameron wrote the script for four Avatar movies, right? Yeah. And he sent in the first one, there were a bunch of notes. He sent in the second one, there were still a bunch of notes. He sent in the third one, there were a few pages of notes. But for the fourth one, he sent it in. He, the person who sent the notes, <laughs> the response was, uh, it was a word I can't say, but the response was that they obviously liked it. And he yeah. was like, what were the notes? And he said, those were the notes. 
So that's so if there's no notes, that's very, very Yeah, big. that's some I don't know if you knew, but uh while filming Avatar two, he shot I think the first thirty minutes of or like twenty minutes of Avatar three and mm. then he already shot the ending for Avatar four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he already has some of the movie shot while he was doing Avatar two. But uh so this man's ahead of schedule. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. ahead of schedule. James Cameron knows what he's doing when it comes to directing and he's very precise on his timing, especially when make, even though we had to wait like what ten ten years for Avatar mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. But if you give the man a time and a good script, he will execute it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like I said, it's just a hit or miss of what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that I mean, yeah, James Cameron, he he makes when he makes the Avatar movies, it's like the director's cut, like when there's nothing cut yet, when there's like nothing changed, that that's hours on that. And I'm pretty sure my coworker was telling me that it was like seven, eight. Yeah, seven, eight hours. Yeah. And then uh, he made a statement when people heard about that, they were like, like, oh, like, you know, like we don't want to go to a movie theater and sit there for seven, eight hours. And mm-hmm. he says, he's like, he's like, but you guys have no problem binge watching a show of ten episodes in one season in right. one night, which is like ten hours right there. Exactly. And like everyone was like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. You got a point. Yeah, there, I mean, if he wants to put a director's cut out, just put it on Disney Plus. That's yeah. all, because you know, I, I I would never put that in a theater because I don't think that would do well. Yeah, but putting it on Disney Plus, you can do that because you can you actually like break it off into yeah, exactly. sections. Like, you can watch like the first two hours one day, right? Or maybe like the beginning of the day, go do whatever you got to do, come back, and then you know, knock out another two three hours. Exactly. That's yeah. that's what I mean. You know, and I. You know, that'd be a good idea. But, there are people you know. who uh, who have really love those movies. My buddy is one of them. I remember when we're walking out of the theater like at 2 in the morning. I'm exhausted. And he's like saying, that movie was great. Easily the best movie of like 2022. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, man. I'm like, I'm like it wasn't that good. Was like, <laughs> he was like saying, what do you mean? He's saying, I thought like, no, like, I thought you're like the cinema master. You love movies and everything. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I only think that's top five for 2022 movies. I'm yeah. like, my personal opinion. But for him, it was he liked it better than Batman, which I thought was crazy. I was about to say that's kind of crazy, that's but you know, like you said, hit yeah. or miss, hit or yeah. miss, yeah, hit or miss, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at with the um, them making an effort. I pre, I, I, I'm sure we all as fans appreciate that they are taking the time to make this effort. Now, we have some recent things that came out. Um, yesterday night, uh, yesterday morning, uh, I woke up at. Four o'clock in the morning on accident, and I went on YouTube and I saw that there was a new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer, and I watched it. I had to watch it again when I woke up, like later that day, because I was still a bit tired. But when I watched it a second time, I noticed a lot of things, it, and I think that there, this movie is gonna be good. It, yeah. Possibly better, possibly better than the uh, first. First one, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I think it will be better than the first one. You for think sure. so? Yeah, I, I'm willing to put money on it. Because this this movie I think is getting a two part, which yeah. it is yeah. So I got I got some high hopes for this. I definitely think it's gonna be better than the first one, which is really hard for movies to do because there's only a few movies where the sequel is better than the original. Yeah. Such as The Dark Knight, Terminator mm-hmm. Two. Those movies were way better than their original. Uh, obviously surpassed their. Uh, I forgot the word. They surpassed their well, their original movie. Yeah. So I think Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse 2 is going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I have high hopes. I think so, too. I mean, like, because it just looks good. I, I Seeing all these spider people, seeing people we've recognized before, like Spectacular Spider-Man, PS4 Spider-Man, we're seeing um, Ultimate Spider-Man, and it's just, like, it's so cool that they're doing this. Because... Uh, and I also want to bring up how in the trailer, Miguel, or Miguel, who, Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say, first of all, I think he'll end up being an antagonist, given I how th- they kind of I thought of he already him. was, because we saw him in the first trailer absolutely body slam Miles. Yeah, but I think he was trying to stop him from something. It was either something he was trying to stop him from something or something else, but I think he could potentially be an antagonist. I, I still think the spot is still going to be the biggest antagonist, but I yeah. think he'll be an antagonist for a bit. You know, because well, he's kind of crazy. Because you know? especially from this last trailer, it seems like all the Spider Men were and Spider Man and Woman were trying to stop Miles. Mm-hmm. So what if if Miles is like the antagonist and the protagonist at the same time? Mm-hmm. Like you know how like there's yeah. certain like movies or shows that do that. You know like, like 
say like Sopranos or Breaking Bad, yeah. how you have the main character who is obviously the protagonist of the entire thing. Yeah. But as time goes on, we see him become the antagonist. You know, yeah. They're technically really the bad guy. I would like to see that with Miles, though, you mm -hmm. know, because in his mind, he thinks he's doing what's right, when in reality, it may not be the best thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I like that they tie, I think they tied in very smoothly and perfectly how they mentioned, you know, as you said, Doctor Strange and that little nerd from Earth 19. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, just hearing that got me so excited. Yeah. Because that opens up. I, I what I think I'm theorizing that end credit for the second part movies overall that for the second part Miles goes to the MCU somehow he somehow goes to the MCU yeah um and that's when he finally makes his live action debut for the MCU so you know obviously we know that they're all connected all they're all connected you know like yeah. MCU Earth 19999 I'm sure 616 comics uh. The PlayStation Spider Man's universe, Spectacular Spider Man, across or into the Spider Verse universe, those are all connected now. Yeah, because yeah, because obviously we saw Spider Man No Way Home. We got Tobey Maguire, Andrew yep, Garfield, yep. and then uh, towards the end, or and obviously we have all the villains from those movies. Yeah. And then towards the end, we kind of saw like the multiverse starting to break. Yep. We started seeing new villains like like shadows emerge. Yeah, I saw Rhino. You I saw, saw Rhino. Rhino. Saw Craven the Hunter. Yep, you saw Scorpion. Scorpion. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I really want to say really quickly about Scorpion, I'm really sad that we only saw him that post uh, post credit scene in Homecoming with Michael Mando. Yeah, yeah. I want to see more because Michael Mando is is a great actor. He uh, he was in Better Call Saul. I loved him in that. He was the main villain in Far Cry 3. I uh, mm. really loved him mm. in that. But uh, I'm kind of sad we didn't get to see more of him. So maybe hopefully in the Spider-Verse or across the Spider-Verse, maybe we get to see a Michael Mando Scorpion yeah. in animation style. Yeah. Cause especially the animation like in that movie, the fighting, the swinging, everything is on point. Especially oh, yeah. to see a fight between Scorpion, especially an agile Scorpion mm -hmm. against Miles Morales. That'd go hard. Oh yeah, that'd, that'd be sweet. That'd go nuts. That'd go so. That'd be that'd that would so be sweet. really sweet. Yeah, and it's just I'm I I'm really excited for this because it's just there's so much that's going to be happening. It's so much that it's going to be two parts, and it's just it's so cool that we're seeing Peter B. Parker again from the first one. We're getting going again, um, and just this movie. I'm so so excited for. I I I honestly cannot wait for. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I'm pretty, that comes out, I think, June something. Early yeah, June. Very, yeah, very early June. That's soon. That's coming. That's soon. Yeah, it, to be honest, it's going to be here before we even know it. Oh, so, yeah. But, like, we're going to wake up tomorrow. It's going to be June, and we're going to be able to see the movie. I actually can't wait. Mm -hmm. I love the first one. Especially because when I went to go watch the first one, I remember I, would, I watched it. Uh, I didn't watch it in the theaters. I know I didn't watch it in the theaters. But I, I didn't have any expectations, really. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, I'm like an animation spider movie. And yeah, then, exactly. You know, walking out of that theater, I was like, oh, my God, I get it. Literally. I was like, lost for words. I was like, what? I know. <laughs> yeah. that, that was my favorite movie of that year. I personally think that was the best yeah, movie of 2018. Like, 2018. 2018, that yeah. long ago? Yeah. Wow. That that's some, that's quite some time. That is know, quite, I thought, I was thinking maybe I was, I was like a freshman or a sophomore, but. My God, eighth grade. No, I I remember, I remember after seeing that movie, I listened to the soundtrack almost like every day. I, I. And that's when the, that Post Malone song. Yep, like Sunflower. Sunflower. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Oh, and I, man, I, I I still listen to that soundtrack every once in a while. I I enjoy that game or, or the movie a lot, and the yeah. soundtrack is very good because a lot of the artists it, it was stacked. You know, there was a lot of artists in there. And I think the only do the song same I really remember one. is is Sunflower. I'm not gonna lie. Really. But. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I like I like them all. I remember them all, and I still listen to them. So yeah, I mean, I'm very very excited for these two. You know, I'm just it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be sweet. Yeah. Um, next we have a trailer that came out on Monday. I remember my one of my guys and I were talking about the for Blue Beetle. We were talking about it was coming Monday, and we were talking about that, I think, Saturday, and my boy was like, yeah, there's support leaks are saying that there's going to be a trailer Monday. I believed it because when when it's trailer leak release dates, they are typically on, on like, at least on the dot. Yeah. So they released the trailer Monday. I looked at it. I watched it four times, 
and I I'm excited. I'm excited to be honest. That's why I didn't know there was a trailer until I opened up TikTok and it was like it was like new Blue Beetle trailer incoming now. I was like, oh, one second, let me go watch that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, man, I'm excited for it. Uh, Blue Beetle is a very not really well known DC character, yeah. sadly, but he's he's a great he's character still. Easily one of the greatest characters. Yeah, for mm-hmm. me, maybe like. Maybe like top fifteen. I'll give you that. Yeah, 100%. top fifteen. Because like I said, he's not really well known, but once you really get to know him, you read his comics, you know a little bit of his backstory and everything. Mm-hmm. He's sweet. He's sweet. Yeah, he's, and he's and he's like a he's fun. Yeah, you know. He's like I, I don't want to say like, uh, DC's version of Spider Man, but like he kind of is. Like, like the jokes mm-hmm. he makes and yeah. like you know, his like quick little quips. Yeah. But uh, only thing that's different is obviously his powers. Yeah, the yeah. scarab. The scarab is mm-hmm. it, the best. It's the best. Yeah, and it. So the trailer, uh, Zolo, uh, Zolo Manuela was Miguel in Cobra Kai. So I watched Cobra Kai. I love his character. I love him as an actor. So when I heard he'll be Blue Beetle, I was I was absolutely geeked. And I, I never watched good. Cobra Kai, so yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. I was I was geeked. And you know, looking at this trailer, he looks good. He he, he looks good in this. You know yeah. and. Just I I like the suit. The suit's really nice. You know, a lot of the suit is CGI, obviously, since he's doing like a lot of like stuff yeah. with it. And I think that it will be a very fun watch. And you know, the whole thing with it, it could be seen as like, oh, it's gonna be a Marvel movie. We, we like we talked yeah. about. Um, but I, I'll say this to anybody who thinks that I'll say that keep an open mind because this is his character. And some people I've seen some people say like, oh, it isn't, I want a serious DC movie. This isn't this would be more serious. But I but feel Blue like Beetle's not like that. Yeah, He's that's not, not like him. Serious. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we will get some. We, there are some dark arts yeah. that involve Blue Beetle. Yeah. But they're not going to come like right out of the gates. Oh, yeah, no. Right away with a dark movie for Blue Beetle. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's because he's fun. Like, he is yeah. mainly the fun character. Yeah. And just he's like a character. Dark, it's just like, not it. Oh, we, we kind of already got our darkness with Batman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, and what, this is the, other than Black Adam. After Black Adam was. Shazam mm-hmm. and Shazam was another fun movie. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like Shazam doesn't really tie into the rest of DC. I feel like it's kind of like its own universe. Yeah, yeah. Right now it kind of yeah. feels like it's because James thing. Gunn hasn't said anything about Shazam, you know, remaining a character mm-hmm. in his universe. Blue Beetle, though, I feel like we will be able to see yeah. more of. He said he's staying. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will be able to see more of in James Gunn's universe. Yeah, I'm so happy you said that he's staying because because <laughs> it just looks it, it's it's great and I I like. I liked a lot of things about the trailer. I, I enjoyed that he's going to have some conflict because we know he was conflicted when he first got his scarab um, because he was like, I don't know if I want this because he's handling one of the most powerful things in the universe. Yeah. And I think that the movie itself will be very fun. I'm, I'm not really sure who like the antagonist is right now. Like I know we got like a glimpse of like somebody who's like, the scarab belongs to me even though it shows you, which kind of doesn't make sense like yeah if it didn't choose you it obviously don't belong to you. to you yeah um but seeing and like i, I just want to say that the fighting seems very very interesting i think it looks good and like at the end of the trailer when like he turned the two swords into, into like that one sword. uh the final fantasy yeah the yeah, uh like, buster sword yeah the buster sword i was like oh my god i know i was, I was like i'm like let's go dude i'm like this because no, he can create anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Create, especially when i saw like the the spike balls yeah and, and he yeah like, like he did like how they do doing in boxing I was, i'm like oh my god I'm i know like, like, i know this guy's gonna be laying some devastating like blows oh I'm yeah 100 sure. yeah. and like it, seeing the the Buster Sword, I, I'm like, okay, there's gonna be a lot of fun references in here to oh, like yeah, what we sure. know, you know, games and stuff. That'll be so fun. I'd love to see like the Blades of Chaos or something. Oh man, he's, he's got like the chains, he's like whipping it around his head. He's like pulling enemies' clothes. That would be it. insane. Like, oh, I would love that. Yeah. And like when he when he pulled out the sword, it's like, oh yeah. Oh, but the edits are already going crazy. Yeah. I've already seen some edits. Oh yeah, I've like, already seen some sweet edits. Oh yeah. Too. Yeah. Uh, now now I'm even more hyped. Now, oh yeah, yeah exactly. Now I'm even more wild. Exactly. Up. That's gonna be so sweet, dude. Exactly. And I think that I I well not 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 think, but I hope that he gets to meet Batman and has a similar interaction as to how they first met when like Blue Beetle was trying to handle a situation that he kind of made worse, and then Batman swooped in and helped out, but he also like. Batman gave Blue Beetle advice as to like what being a hero means. Yeah. And what like that there will be sacrifices, but 
being a hero means something and he goes into that i really hope that he has that interaction because that seems like a very important thing to his character yeah but the thing is if they're gonna do that we have to know who they're gonna cast as yeah. batman first in yeah. james gunn's universe uh i, I only know who i want to be because ben affleck i feel like he got a lot of hate i did like I batman loved, he was my favorite batman yeah. live action yeah no he he was brutal oh he yeah he's dark he don't get me wrong i like brutal. christian bale robert Pattinson too I just don't know where that who else they would cast. I saw this one where uh, people wanted Jensen Eccles, the guy who plays Soldier Boy mm-hmm. in The Boys. I could see it personally. I could see that personally, but I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, that's fair. I'm being honest. That's fair. Yeah, but uh, don't get me wrong. He he's a good actor. I loved him as Soldier Boy. Yeah, he was great. As he was Boy. he was funny. He was intimidating, and obviously we, he he got he got big for that role. Yeah, as Soldier Boy. Yeah, he did. So we know that he's capable mm-hmm. of becoming the Batman. Yeah. But I, he played the I, Batman I, once in a oh in yeah a, yeah he uh, voice actor yeah he also did uh, the Red Hood and Red Hood yeah, yeah. Red Hood too and very good voice actor yeah he is by him, yeah you know um but yeah I mean yeah Ben Affleck he was brutal I, I I don't know who they're gonna cast I can't wait to find out I'm yeah. hoping it's good you know uh, typically they don't really go with our casting like who fan cast because obviously yeah. director knows what they're doing yeah um but I will say that. If they are doing a Batman, there will be Nightwing. Personally, I think Dylan O'Brien is still the perfect fit. Oh yeah, the look. Oh yeah, perfect. He has the charisma, and I per- that, that's what I think. Anyway, no, 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 I agree you know. with you. I agree with you that one hundred percent. Yeah, um, but yeah. So basically, I'm very excited for the Blue Beetle movie. You know, that's that'll be very very fun in my opinion. I I can't wait yeah. for that. I think the only time a fan cast has ever worked out was in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. John Krasinski as yes. Mr. Fantastic. Woo. Because even the director said Sam Raimi, he was like, yeah, he's like, the only reason we did that is because fans wanted him so bad. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's kind of like a perfect fit for him. Man. I agree. Yeah. And he has the beard. Yeah, he has, and he the, has beard, the beard. You know? yeah. he, he, just, he, he looks like Rick Richards, yeah. but he's not coming back, sadly. sadly. He isn't? Oh. No, I don't think he is. I think that's just a one and done thing, no. which I still appreciate that they did, though. Yeah. You know, it was so, it was so cool, but... Too bad he was in a movie that was mediocre. Sorry, sorry. I'm hating. I'm hating. Too bad he got killed off in the first two. <laughs> I <didn't> know. <laughs> he got ripped. Well, I was like, you got kids, right? Yeah, I got kids. You got a wife? Yeah. All right, cool. So the kids won't be orphaned. What? Uh, and uh, exactly. Torn. I was, like, oh. I was like, man. I mean, like, they were just used as a plot device to show, like, oh, so she ain't playing. But, yeah. you know, but yeah. Um, That's just kind of, like, our thoughts on the Blue Beetle trailer. Actually, I mean, we might as well just throw this in. Real, real quick, Secret Invasion trailer. Did you see it? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I kind, I, I do like that. Uh, what's his name? Nick Fury. No, the actor Samuel oh, Jackson. Yeah, I love him as an actor. Yeah, He's funny. I uh, recently rewatched Pulp Fiction. I mm-hmm. loved him in that. <laughs> Great actor, so I am happy he's getting his own Marvel project yep. that I know for a fact he can ki- carry. Oh, yeah. Because obviously he has the acting ability, the acting skills. Yeah. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about is that his plot armor is about to be insane. He's going against an alien yeah. invasion, and he's just a guy with a gun. That's yeah. it. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. But uh, if anyone can do it, Nick Fury can. Oh, yeah. Nick Fury yeah. is – he's – He's great, you know, he, and he's. I've always loved seeing Nick Fury and things. He always does good. Uh, I'm excited for that too. I, I think that the story will be good, and then you know they brought in some nice, some nice actors and actresses in there. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just kind of just quick thought. Yeah, you know, just quick thought. Um, all right, so topic two, we have a we got an announcement that Ninja Turtles will be getting a game that is based off God of War, but goes with the last ronin storyline now if you don't know what the last ronin comic line is basically mikey is the last turtle standing sadly all all of his brothers passed away they were killed um but that story that comic was very good i think it it was very heartfelt especially to see such a goofy character turn dark and serious like that yeah exactly he he became yeah. very very serious. Yeah, of course. I mean, and he's he lost his family. Know, yeah, and like even uh, even Splinter said that in anything that Mikey has the most potential out of the out of all four of them. Yeah, and we obviously see that because when he's ser- when he's serious, he does not play. Yeah, he does not play at all. Especially if it's inspired by God of War, and I'm yeah. talking like God of War one through three, mm-hmm. when he was when Kratos was on a rampage yeah. going through the entire Greek pantheon. Uh, would would be insane. I hope it's like elements of the first three, but like the gameplay, like the gameplay style of, of like four and five. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I I would love that very much. 
I think that the I think that it'll get a lot of attention because one, I'm not a lot of not a lot of people really know about the last Ronin, you know, um, but they will find out soon. And, and you know, Ninja Turtles, as we talked about before, is a very popular popular franchise or just entire thing. So just seeing that, me personally, since I've loved it since I was a kid, I'm very, very excited for it. And especially since I know the comic line, it's so interesting to me because after his brothers died, it so much had changed. April was just completely different. She has a daughter now. Um, I forgot what Casey was doing. He was just doing his own thing, really. It's very, very exciting. What, what, what do you think? Uh, like I said, I can't. I mean... Like I said, I, I just want it to be a straight revenge story. Yeah. That would be great. Like I said, I'm saying like I said a lot. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I mean, hey. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too much about Ninja Turtles. I'm not going to lie. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, I'm an expert. I would just love to see a straight revenge story of Mikey going back and getting his get back for his brothers. Yeah. Especially seeing a serious, dark, more yeah. t- more brutal Mikey too. Mm-hmm. We've never and seen if, that on screen. Yeah. Especially if we can get all like all the turtles' as weapons and his yeah. own arsenal. Yeah. Is what is Master Splinter still alive or what's up with him? He is not. Not oh, so it really is just him standing. It's yeah, pretty much. Yeah. A, a straight revenge story, especially as it's inspired by God of War. Because God of War has one of the best revenge stories. If uh, not out there. the best. Yeah, if not the best. Don't get me wrong, there's games that come close to it, movies yeah. and shows. Yeah. But God of War is That's definitely there. up there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, because, like, he, that the, the yeah, it, it's basically a revenge story, you know, obviously. And after a point, he's like, I, I know what I'm doing, and I, I know that this is for my family, but is this really right? And, like, he, like, after he goes through with everything he did, um, so I really hope we get to see that, because he, he has changed. And he, I remember he was telling April's daughter, he was like, Listen, whatever you're feeling, like this confliction that you're feeling, all this, like I'm pretty sure her and her mom, or like her and April, aren't really like that tight, and like they're always like, like beefing. I'm pretty sure, if yeah. I remember correctly, it's been years, but I'm pretty sure he's like, you gotta, you know, this is your family, you know, you gotta get over this. This is you got cherish, you know. Yeah. And just and and also, I just want to say, seeing Mikey broken like that, that that first That's of all, that hurts. Yeah, yeah, that, that hurts. is heartbreaking. You know, the, like you said, the goofiest character, he's serious now. You know, he, he's he's very very hurt. You know, that takes like a lot of trauma and pain to turn someone who's so like you know loose, who always goes with the flow, mm-hmm. who's always happy, smiling, cracking jokes, into a very dark and just stubborn very guy. St- yeah, dark, stubborn, and he got he got very rageful. You know, yeah, and like. Joker once said, "All it takes is one day to turn the sanest man to lunacy." Yeah. So I mean, which I guess in his cha- his case, it's true. Yeah, and uh, like, man, it's just um, I, I want to see the game, and I really want to see how they do it. I'm sure the graphics are going to be on point. I'm sure the gameplay will be on point. Just I'm very excited, you know. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of like how we feel about this whole thing, and. You know, kind of going off of games, we have the Gears of we have Gears of War being announced into a movie, and it's written by the Dune, the like the Dune and Doctor Strange writer. Personally, I never seen Dune, but I know that people yeah, said that it's very good because well, one, it's more highbrow, so there's a lot of like more talking than action in the first yeah. part. I know in the second part there'll be more action. But in the first part there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of dialogue. And I've heard that it was very good because of that. I I, I love movies with dialogue. Same. Yeah. I that's why I love Tarantino so much, because the way he writes his dialogue mm-hmm. is, is great. He's probably the best dialogue writer out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And um uh, he also one of the the guys writ, uh, wrote Doctor Strange as well. I think it's just the first one. I, the first one wasn't bad. I think the first one. I like the first one better than the second one. I'd say that much. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So I mean, I I think there's hope. I uh, I know you said you only played the third one. Um, yeah. That one was actually a really good one. I played. Actually, I didn't play all. I played one through four. I didn't play the five. I, I don't know. It's, I kind of just lost my interest in it. We we just you know it's just 
It's okay. But I never really played. The, I did play a little bit of the story, but mainly when I played, I played with my brother during like the co-op, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. survival, yep. or uh, just multiplayer in general. Because mm-hmm. the multiplayer was fun, and yeah. I love the whole like premise of the game. How it was like uh, Lotus, right? Is that what they're or Locus? Locus, I think. I think I think it's Locus. I don't know. Yeah. It's been a while. It's something like Locus or Lotus, and how like they live like underneath the earth, and how they yeah. came back to take it back up. Yeah, because you know it's. It's just such a cool story. It's like an alien invasion, but from within the Earth. Yeah, exactly. So, like, like, they were already there. Yeah. You like, know? They, I think uh, it said that the Lotus or Locusts were there even before humans. Yeah, exactly. So, like, technically, we kind of took it from them. And yeah. now they're just reclaiming. You yeah, know? you know. And yeah. my dad and I played, we played the first four together. Like, we played the co-op story, and I, I remember it was so fun. And just, like, the gameplay was fun. The characters are nice. Like... Marcus, that's the main character. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. like Marcus. I remember Dom. Yeah, Dom. Uh, I remember Dom's death. That yeah, was, that was Man. sad. That was horrible. He was what, driving. That was sacrificing. What a death. Was like, what a oh, death. No. He, no. Marcus was yeah. calling out to Dom, and he was like, "I'm sorry, bro. I gotta do this." Yeah. And it was a, it was a good sacrifice. It was. Yeah. It was a great sacrifice. It was. Man, it, it, it was sad. I remember when I was like, no. But yeah, I remember I remember watching my brother do that. And even, especially my brother, he's a very man to, he's a very hard man for him to show any emotion at all. I saw him shed a tear. I was like, what? I'm yeah. like, this must be big. Yeah, it, yeah. it is big. And I remember the mission too. It was, it was something. And I just, I think that there is some hope for this. You know, if they do it, this is something that would have to be executed very well or else it just won't do well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, 100. Like, there are some things where, like, you, you can be, like, lax with it, but this is one of those things where, like, you either are on the dot or you make it work. Yeah. You know? Uh, that's kind of just my thoughts. It's on, not like something, like, you can change up. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah, like, like, something you kind of do. You got to follow the game. Yeah. It's either like, you follow the game or you do something different, but you need you need to make that work. Yeah. Or else it's just not going to Or it's just going to flop. Like, you know, some... Uh, actually, no. No, not that. Uh, you know, it's just... That's kind of what I think. You know? Yeah. What do you, if you, you got any thoughts on this? I know you don't. No, uh, like I said, I didn't play much of the Gears of War games, especially not really much of the story. I did mm-hmm. watch some of the story, but uh, I remember the multiplayer and the co-op was fun. Yeah. I remember like the chainsaw weapon. Yep, yep. That was fun to use. That was used all and, the time. Uh, I think that was kind of like my first introduction to multiplayer before, you know, really? like Black Ops 2 came out yeah, and stuff. that's fair. I, yeah. I think the same. I think that's the same for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're getting a movie. I'm very excited. Written by the guy who did Dune and Doctor Strange. That means there is potential because, you know, there's more action than dialogue, but the dialogue is there, you know, so obvious because, you know, Doctor Strange, more action than dialogue. Dune, more dialogue than action. So it so could be like this, a perfect blend of both. Yeah, a yeah, good mix. yeah. I see what you're saying there. Very good mix. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm excited for that. And then we have our last topic, topic three. So we're we talking about Better Call Saul. That it ended very recently, and we'll also be talking about like Breaking Bad, like how it all ties in. Personally, I never watched Better Call Saul. I need to. I know I need to. So I'm kind of let you carry that yeah. one. But like, I can talk. I've seen Breaking Bad uh, all the way through. So like, we, you know, I'll let you kind of carry this conversation. But you know, what 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 do you think of like the whole? Thing? So, uh, Better Call Saul is obviously kind of like a prequel. Yeah. And it's a, a sequel. prequel and a sequel. It's it a like it, and it, it moves. It moves. Yeah. It moves into it. So it's like know? always at the beginning of the season, the first ten minutes, we get to see Saul's life mm-hmm. after Breaking Bad, how he how he's in hiding, how they're yeah. looking for Jesse, how Walter's dead, and uh, we kind of see how like he still lives in fear after yeah. that and paranoia. But and then the uh, the show will always go back to his life before Breaking Bad, how he came up as a lawyer yeah. and how he got involved into like the. Like the crime, the, yeah, it's like the crime role and everything yeah. with the cartel, mm-hmm. and then uh, it's really and you, know, you find out his name isn't really Saul. That's just a name he made up. His real name's Jimmy. Yeah, and uh, it was great. It's a very slow burn show, but if you're looking for a show with great, great written characters, great attention to detail, mm-hmm. a slow burn that builds up to an insane climax, this is the show for you. Personally, I like Better Call Saul better than Breaking Bad. Mm. Really. So it was very slow for the first two seasons. And then once the kind of like the cartel started getting involved more, yeah. 
it became really, really good. And then Jimmy or Saul started getting involved into it more. Mm -hmm. He started becoming more of a criminal lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And it just starts picking up, picking up. Because, you know, it, it's also a really funny show. So, you know, like something funny, like light will happen. And then something super serious and dark would happen. Yeah. And it bring you back. And like, wow, I've got this is the world of Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. And especially how the way the show ended. Uh, a great ending for Saul. I loved it personally. It all made sense. Uh, even though it's not the best ending, it's it's still a, a great, perfect ending for him. And the show had one of the best antagonists I've ever seen. Uh, another Salamanca, uh, Lalo. Yeah. He's crazy, like Tuco, but he's smart like Walter. Yeah. He is insane. He's he literally an outsmart Gus on on multiple uh, occasions. So yeah, for me personally, I love Better Call Saul. I love the way it ended. I remember when the show had ended, I just sat there and looked at the TV for like ten minutes. I was like, wow, I'm like, it's over. I'm like, I'm like, now we know what happens to each and every character in the Breaking yeah. Bad universe. Man, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I, I do want to check it out. I, it's on my list. I've been slacking. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's um, super slow. It's <clears throat> yeah. super super slow. But that's okay. You know? Yeah, so but it's you still it's through. still great. Yeah, yeah. You just got pushed through. And you know, Breaking Bad. I think. I mean, to be honest, you saying you like it more than Breaking Bad, that's not a hot take. I think it's very, it's a good mix. It's either you, which one you like better, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm sure, like, you know, Breaking Bad, I Don't get me wrong, Breaking Bad's still amazing. Yeah. And it, Better Call Saul is just better just by a little bit because mm -hmm. you get to see so much of Saul's, like, character of who he was before. Yeah. And then uh, how he became this, like, dark, twisted person. It's kind of like, like the Heisenberg effect. You mm -hmm. know, like, you feel bad for Walter because he has cancer. He doesn't have enough money to provide for him and his family that yeah. he will soon die. Similar case to, you know, Saul, but as, obviously, the show goes on, he becomes, you know, the villain. He yeah. becomes a bad guy. He ends up screwing over his own brother, and, you know, he... I, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't watched it, but it is great, and like I said, we get to see Saul kind of become his own villain too yeah yeah so yeah i mean like, yeah i just uh it's it's all it's all wrapped up yeah you know i i'm i they might do something they might do a spinoff for like gus or something but as i don't of think now, i watched that to be honest you don't, not, you don't yeah think so? uh, to be honest i think they should just leave it how it is it ended it. perfectly with better call saw we saw what happened to Jesse El Camino. He got away. We saw what happened to Walter. And what Breaking did happen Dead. to Jesse? Like, what, what, what's he doing in Better Call Saul now? Like, where's he at? Like, in Better Call Saul. Or, like, I mean, like, when the end of Better Call Saul is kind of happening, what's Jesse up to? So, the last couple of episodes of Better Call Saul are about, you know, Saul's life after Breaking Bad, how he's still in hiding yeah. and stuff. And, uh... We don't hear much about Walter or Jesse, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We get to see them in the flashback, which yeah, was dope. That. But uh, all we know is that you know they can't find Jesse Pinkman. He's he's gone. But us as viewers, we know that he's up in Alaska, living a new life, mm -hmm. and he finally found, I guess, his peacefulness. But I don't know. It must be a really lonely life because after you lost everything, yeah, you're now up there in Alaska all alone. But uh, yeah, obviously Walter, we know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. He died. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't want to say anything about Saul. Great ending, though. Great ending for all the characters, to be honest. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just... Yeah, I'm going to shoot. I'm glad you uh, carried that one. Because I don't <laughs> yeah. know much about Better Call Saul, but, yeah, I mean, like... That's how I felt with the, the Teenage Mutant yeah. Ninja Turtles. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you've given your thoughts. I've given my small amount of thoughts. Cause, yeah. You know, I don't really... It's not much I could say. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's I think, yeah, the top. I think that's it for the episode. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all right, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching Culture Verse. Episode three. Yep. Stay tuned next week. We should have another episode. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll find some topics. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. of course. There's we'll always find some news. Topics. We're for sure going to yeah. brainstorm a little bit. But uh, yeah. There's always news. Yeah. But well, uh, um, thank you for watching. Have a good one, Nova. Yep.